students in the last lecture we will discuss up to our step number 2 of design of plate pattern okay so students in today's session we are designing our plate cutter section which resist maximum shear force and maximum bending moment so let us revise in the last lecture we have to find out maximum shear force and you all know that the span of gantry the span of plate cutter is 24 meter and this 24 meter span is subjected to udl having the value of 58 kN per meter this 58 kN per meter is including a self weight okay and this 24 meter span is subjected to two point loads which is at 6 meter from both the ends okay so students in the last lecture we have to find out maximum shear force it means maximum reactions which is find out at the supports so there are two supports which is ra and rb and it is already discussed that in our previous lecture that our figure is symmetric that means the reaction on both the ends is remain same and the value of both the reaction is 996 kN okay after that we have to find out maximum bending moment so students after calculation of maximum bending moment as per your semester 3 subject which is mechanics of solid the maximum bending moment will generate and will accommodate at the point of contraflexor it means where the shear force is equal to zero at that point your bending moment is equal to maximum okay so in the last lecture we have to find out our maximum bending moment at the center of span which is equal to 5976 okay so let us start in this lecture we have to design our this plate gutter section and after that we have to check whether our provided trial and section error section is safe or unsafe in shear force and bending moment okay so you all know that we have to design our section in such a way that it resist maximum shear force having a value of 996 kN and maximum bending moment having the value of 5976 kN into meter okay so now let us moving further to our step number 3 which is the section selection okay so students our plate gutter section is a welded section okay there is no rolled section rolled section it means the section which is directly available in the market but it is already known and already discussed that in our introductory session that when the span is very large then the bending moment and the shear force which is generated on that span having required a depth maximum okay and in steel table we have the maximum depth of 600 mm so whenever the span is very large and it resist maximum bending moment then you have to provide it the higher depth of section okay so you can see that this is our i section in which this is our top flange this is our wave portion and this is our bottom flange and this is the connection of welding we have to provide it this all the connections with the welding okay because in the question it is clearly mentioned that we have to design a plate gutter using welding connection okay so let us start our step number 3 which is section selection in which we have main two components first one is this is flange and another one this is wave okay so you can see that first of all we have to find out this depth depth of wave portion so the depth of wave portion is called as optimum depth of gutter which is denoted by small d and whenever we have to find out the value of small d then our equation is m into k divided by fy raised to 1 by 3 okay 
1 by 3 is equal to 0 0.33. So students, you can see that our M, M means maximum moment for which we have to design. So it is 5976 into K. Now, what is the value of K? So students, there are mainly three types of examples in this chapter. First is unstiffened. It means we have to know provided any stiffness, whether it is vertical stiffener or it is horizontal stiffener. So whenever we have to not provided any stiffness, then we have to put down the value of K in the range of 100 to 150. Okay. So that's why we have to provide it. the value of K is 150 in this example. In the next example, our second type of example in which we have to provide it only vertical stiffener. There is no transfer stiffener is there. So at that time, we have to provide it our value of K in the range of 180 to 220. Okay. So in the second example, we have to provide it the value of K is equal to 180 to 200. Okay. And in the third type of example, whenever we have to provide it, horizontal as well as vertical stiffness then we have to provide it the value of k is equal to 250 okay this all this value is given on page number 63 okay so this check will be discussed in the next step which is our step number four so students what is the value of m the value of m is 5976 into 10 raised to 6 okay this is 10 raised to 6 into k so it is already discussed that in the question it is clearly mentioned that we have to design a plate cutter for unstiffened section it means no any stiffeners are provided so that's why we have to provide it the value of k is equal to 150 divided by fy which is equal to 250 so students after calculating all the data, we have to find out our small d value is 1422.34 mm. It means we have to provide it optimum depth. Optimum depth, it means maximum depth is 1422.34. Okay. Now we have to provide it our depth of wave portion which is having the value less than 142. 0.34 mm okay so why we had why we are providing less depth so it is the region of buckling okay so students let us provide it our depth of wave portion is 14 mm now you can see that in this figure this depth is 1400 mm now what is this thickness so this thickness is generally 8 mm to 12 mm okay so in this example we have to assume that our depth of sorry our thickness of wave plate is 12 mm it means this green color portion which is our wave portion size is now 1400 into 12 mm okay now we are moving further to this portion's calculation so this portion is basically our flange portion okay so you can see that our flange portion is the resist of bending moment and it is already discussed that in the gantry gutters chapter that our flange portion is taking our bending moment okay so first of all you can see that our value of small d is 1400 and tw which is the thickness of wave is 12 mm so now what is the ratio of d by tw it is 116.66 which is greater than 67 epsilon now what is 67 epsilon why we are checking this so this is our check number four and this is our step number four so this portion will be discussed in our next step okay so now we are moving further to our find out the size of flange portion now you can see that what is the area so this is called as thickness so this is our thickness of flange and this is our width of flange now the orange portions area is b into d it means bf into tf 
So you can see that the area of flange is BF into TF, but this area required having the size of how much? So first of all, we have to find out AF minimum area of flange is required. So the equation is M into gamma M0 divided by Fy into D. Now this D is our D provided. Okay. So students, our this value is 5976 into 10 raised to 6. Gamma M0 is 1.1. Fy is equal to 250 and small d is equal to 1400. Okay. So whenever we have to put in down all the values and we have to calculate our value of AF is 1.8781.71 mm square. It means we have to provide it minimum 18,781 mm square area to resist 5976 kN into meter moment. Okay. So now we have to provide it much area than the required area. So now it is already discussed that our area is BF into TF, but this both the values are unknown. So as discussed earlier that our section having three class, basically four class, but in the highest portal provision, there is three class is there. First is plastic, second is compact and at last is semi-compact. And it is already discussed that in our last and previous all the chapters that whenever you have to design any structural component, then you have to design it or plastic section because it is the heaviest section so whenever you are going to the GQ exam then you have to assume the plastic section only okay so you can see that for plastic section as per data given in page number 18 so you all the students are moved to page number 18 in which first line outstanding element of compression flange on that the equation is B upon TF is equal to 8.4 epsilon. Now our B is equal to 8.4 into TF into epsilon. The value of epsilon is always remain 1. Okay. The equation of epsilon is also given on page number 18. So students after calculating all the data our value of B is 8.4 into TF but you all the students are moved to page number 19 in which there is first figure which is called as a roll figure in which it is clearly mentioned that your value of B is half of the BF so now we are moving down the reverse problem it is BF is equal to 2B okay so for BF it is 2B and for TF it is also TF. Now what is the value of B? The value of B is 8.4 TF. So students you can see that your this equation is in the form of TF. It means your TF is 33.43 mm. It means you have to provide a minimum 33.43 mm thickness of flange. Okay. So we have to provide it greater thickness than the required thickness so it is provide our thickness of flange is 40 mm so one question is arise that we have to provide it the thickness of flange is 35 mm it is feasible then the answer is yes you have to provide it the thickness of flange greater than required moment sorry required thickness okay so you can see that our required thickness is 33 mm so you have to provide it the thickness of flange is 35 mm also okay because this is a trial and error section so now if your thickness of flange is 40 mm so you have to put down the value of 40 in this equation so you have to calculate your value of BF so as per data given your BF required is 469.54 mm it means you have to provide it greater value than the required value it means you have to provide it your V 
width of train section is 500 mm okay so now you can see that your size of one flange is 500 cross 40 mm so now our trial and error section is ready in which the width of flange is 500 mm thickness of flange is 40 mm depth optimum depth of wave is 1400 mm your thickness of wave is 12 mm and this data is remain same as this data it means our total depth which is equal to capital D is 1480 mm which is equal to 40 plus 1400 plus 40 it means it is 1480 mm okay so students this is our trial sections now we are moving further that our selected trial and error section is safe or unsafe in moment and shear okay so for that first of all we have to check one minimum wave thickness which is we have to assume that it is 12 mm okay so now step number four is minimum wave thickness requirement in which there is two calculations first one is serviceability requirement so you all the students are moved to page number 63 in which minimum wave thickness requirements are given in which your first is serviceability requirement and on serviceability requirement the first case you can see that when transfer stiffeners are not provided it means there is unstiffened case and for unstiffened case your d by t ratio is 116.67 it is less than 200 because 116 is greater than 90 so for this case it is less than or equal to 200 epsilon so that's why you have to return this condition in your exam okay so this is your serviceability check now another check which is given on page number 64 so this case is compression flange buckling requirement and in which it is same case similar case in which where transfer stiffeners are not provided it means there is unstiffened so for unstiffened your value of d by tw is 116.67 which is less than or equal to 345 epsilon m square okay it means your assumed thickness which is equal to 12 mm with respect to your optimum depth is okay so you can return this sentence like this it means minimum wave thickness 12 mm provided is sufficient okay so students this is the end of our today's session in the next lecture we are moving further to our step number five six and seven and after that we are moving further to our example number two which is with the help of vertical stiffener provided in the second example okay so student this is the end of our today's session thank you